How do I launch my food product online? So if you're figuring out how to create a food product and a food business, but do it solely online and with either just yourself or just a few other people, I'm gonna show you the steps on how you can do this with a small amount of staff, a small budget, and you can get up and running in a short period of time. So this video is gonna be part one of 15 steps. I'm gonna show you individually on each video, and then we're gonna put a series together of a playlist that allow you to definitely just download it and watch every video step by step. We're gonna go in depth as to how each one of these affect your product launch, and we're gonna to get to those steps right now. All right, so welcome back to Marketing Food Online. It is Damian Roberti, founder and CEO of Marketing Food Online. I am a food e-commerce entrepreneur. Me and my wife started our e-commerce businesses uh, roughly about 13 years ago, and we have been, been on Amazon for nearly 10 years now. We're on Etsy, eBay, and our own store as well. And we also offer some other websites that we do. And here on YouTube, we started Marketing Food Online to help food entrepreneurs get their food businesses up and running. Now. More resources and stuff down below. If you check below this video, definitely check out our links down below. We have websites, we even have blogs. We have multiple blogs set up for different types of food businesses. Check out those links to our podcast. You can actually listen to us on the go and check out our blogs as well. So how do I launch my food product? Step one, this is gonna be part one. You need to have an idea. We're gonna start with simple idea. Now, a lot of people enjoy making food. They enjoy cooking for friends at barbecues and family, but they never really focus down on one specific idea. Someone enjoys actually making barbecue sauce, but they're a heck of a baker and they're not sure if they're gonna to start a cookie business. You need to figure out specifically what that product is. Narrow down the product. And when you do, make sure the recipe is something that you enjoy making, okay? Don't just force yourself to do this type of business like any other small business. You need to enjoy what you're doing. I absolutely love what I do and I get up every day, spend roughly about 12 to 13 hours a day doing what I do. It has taken a long time to get to this point. But finding that thing that you like to make is very, very crucially important because otherwise you will not enjoy doing it and you will give up, you'll get frustrated and the business will not prosper or grow from there. So figuring out what you enjoy to make. Now, you have your recipe. Make sure that the recipe is something that you can make with your eyes closed and your hands tied behind your back. Why do I say that? It needs to be a recipe that you know how to make very, very well. Because you, when you first start this endeavor, will be the only one probably making that. So if you know how to make it and you can do it efficiently and effectively, you can produce a lot of products in a short period of time. Try to focus in also on a recipe for a product that doesn't take a lot of time to make. There are plenty of food items out there that people make and it takes an entire day to make a batch. That's not gonna be profitable. Try to find a product that you enjoy making and it's easy to make for you and it doesn't take a lot of time and effort to do it, okay? The reason why I say this is that the longer it takes to produce a product, the more time you invest in it. When you become an entrepreneur, trust me, your responsibilities will skyrocket. There's gonna be a million things that you have to do every day. And if making the product takes up the bulk of that time, your, your business will not prosper and you're not gonna make any money with it, trust me. <laughs> when we first started our Italian bakery, there was a handful of products that we were making from scratch. Uh, cannolis, eclairs, a lot of pastries and such. They were taking up a lot of time and we were only charging a couple of dollars or three or four dollars for each one. And I realized that those were not very profitable. So we transitioned online, we closed our Italian bakery, we now make over 300 different items that we offer, and many of them are items that can be made very, very quickly, and we can scale it and bring in only a couple of part-timers to do it. So keep that in mind. Next up, what I just mentioned, scaling your recipe. So now that you have a recipe and you know what you wanna make, understand the concept of scaling that recipe, meaning that if you have a single recipe for let's say a single batch of hot sauce, understand how to multiply that and create it so it could probably produce 100, 300, or 400 bottles of hot sauce instead of just 12 out of one recipe. So scaling the recipe will be extremely important down the road when your business grows to the point where you can no longer manage to produce what you need to sell and you find a co-packer, that co-packer is gonna to want to have a recipe where they can produce a very large batch of whatever the product is, bottle it, package it, label it, get it out into the marketplace much faster. So you have a recipe, you have something that's easy to make, it's, it's fast to make, also it's easy to scale. Next up, you wanna make something 
You want to test the idea with your family and friends. Now, this is probably a no-brainer and potentially something you're already doing right now, but you want to actually take it to coworkers, go to families and friends and get their honest feedback. A lot of times they're going to give you feedback and they're going to, most of the time you're going to find family and friends who aren't necessarily going to give you honest feedback. They're just going to tell you it's great because they may not want to hurt your feelings. So you want to find people that you can make the product for and get an honest opinion. And what you're doing here is you're trying to find proof of concept. The idea of proof of concept is that you have a product that you produce and you have a lot of either positive feedback or negative feedback. So proof of concept can be also positive and negative because if you get a lot of people say, yeah, it's okay, but I don't know if I necessarily would buy it or I wouldn't really pay for this if I found it online, then that's proof of concept that it's probably not going to work. So if it's something that you enjoy making, that's one thing. If you can make it quick and you can bottle it, package it and make it look pretty, but you get it into the marketplace and people aren't buying it and they're not interested in it, then you're going to waste your resources, your time and your money. So you want to find proof of concept and you want to make sure that you have that feedback from those people around you. Okay. Even if it's family and friends, ask them say, Hey, look, I seriously need your honest opinion. This is something I'm going to put a lot of money, resources and time into making, and I want to turn it into a business. Do you think this is something you would buy? Do you think this is something that you wouldn't? So that would lead you to the direction in which you need to be going. So proof of concept is next. Now, the one thing you need to keep in mind when you launch a food product online, once you have a great idea is going to take us to part two and part two is going to show you about product research. Now, Doing a little bit of research and getting friends and family to try it and get the proof of concept locally and within your community is one thing. But when you go online, the next video we're going to show you is the proof of how the product will actually sell online and that requires product research. So I'm going to show you some tips and tricks and even some websites where you can go to to take your concept and see if it actually is selling online. And if it is, you can actually judge whether it's selling really, really well or just kind of mediocre and is meh, maybe not be something I could do. Maybe I should try a different type of food product. Not every food item also will sell really well online. It won't necessarily transition into something that you can expand and grow on. So this is going to be part one. How do you launch a food product online? Definitely check out the next video that we're going to post will be step two. We're going to show you how to find the product research and the tools to do it right so you can make a good decision. Stay with us all the way through these 15 steps. Each video is going to, buy a good, each video is going to show you specifically more information about each topic so you can understand and grasp what it means. I didn't want to put 15 steps in one video. It'll be probably about three hours long. So definitely check out the next video. If this video was helpful, if you have any questions about how to launch a food product and you're not really sure about the idea step, let us know down in the comments. I'll see you guys on our next video.